Hey guys, so Lenny2261 was able to guess the card art from last week, which was gift from Orisavo. If you think you can guess the one in the background from this week, make sure to drop it in the comments. What's up guys? Welcome to the Jank Divers, where we dive in to the janky side of Commander. I'm Isaac. And I'm Brent. And today we have a different video that we're gonna call Dollar Magic. So every card in this video is gonna be $1 or less. So this is gonna be a good budget deck if some of our other decks were too expensive because we realized that they do kind of get up there. So we wanted to have some other options for people. So today we're gonna to be looking at Etrata Self Mill, our commander, Etrata the Silencer for two and a blue and a black. It's a three five vampire assassin that can't be blocked. And whenever she deals combat damage to a player, exile target creature that player controls and put a hit counter on that card. That player loses the game if they own three or more exiled cards with hit counters on them. Etrata's owner shuffles Etrata into their library. So normally you could, instead of shuffling it into your library, you could just put it back into your command zone and then recast it and attack with it the next turn. But that can get very expensive mana wise. So what we decided to do was actually shuffle Etrata back into our deck and then try to mill Etrata so we can reanimate her. We have a lot of self mill and a lot of reanimate spells. So these are some of our cards that just accomplish both. So we thought it was worth mentioning up front. Connive, Concoct, one of them's four mana and you gain control of target creature with power two or less. And one of them's five mana and you get a surveil three and then return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It helps us with the mill, helps us reanimate a Trata. Extract from darkness, five mana. Each player puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard and then put a creature card from any graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. This is nice um, because it doesn't even have to be from your graveyard. So if you don't have a Trotty yet, you can still keep milling yourself while also pulling back somebody else's big creature. Uh, next up, we have some more milling cards that can also grant us a bit of card selection. So first up will be Thought Scour. One blue for an instant target player puts the top two cards of his or her library into their graveyard and then draw a card. This is a good early game card draw that also mills us a bit. Next up we have Discovery Dispersal. Uh, you choose one of these as you cast it. First up is Discovery, which for one and then a blue or a black, you can Surveil two, which means to look at the top two cards of your library and put any into your graveyard and the rest back on top of your library in any order and then draw a card. Good way to mill yourself while also drawing a card that you want. Or you can cast Dispersal for three and a blue and a black. Each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand then discards a card. You probably won't be casting Dispersal most of the time, but just having it there, especially at instant speed, is kind of nice. And then finally, Notion Rain. For one and a blue and a black, a sorcery, surveil two, then draw two cards, and Notion Rain deals two damage to you. One of the classic three mana draw two spells, but it also can throw some cards into your graveyard, so it accomplishes two things at once for us. We also are big fans of factor fiction and factor fiction type effects. We have a couple of those in our deck. We actually have factor fiction. It is less than a dollar. For four mana, it's an instant. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. You get to put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. With graveyard decks, this can put your opponents in sort of a no-win situation where it doesn't really matter how they stack the piles because your graveyard is helpful for you as a graveyard player. So you just take like the one pile with the one or two cards that are actually decent in your hand instead of in your graveyard. So we also have Epiphany at the Drown Yard, which for one mana and X uh, is an instant reveal the top X plus one cards of your library and separate them into two piles. An opponent chooses one of those piles and put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So it's sort of like fact or fiction, but your opponent is choosing the piles this time. But again, uh, it doesn't really matter. Getting some cards in your hand is always nice and filling up your graveyard is also nice. Atris Oracle of Half-Truths for four mana. 
is a 3-2 with Menace. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face down pile and a face up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Again, we're just milling ourselves while also getting some sort of card advantage. So this can let us draw one or two cards uh, depending on which one you pick. Next up, we have Mirror Mad Phantasm. So for three and two blue, a five one spirit with flying, and then it has an activated ability for one of the blue, Mirror Mad Phantasm's owner shuffles it into his or her library. If that player does, he or she reveals cards from the top of that library until a card named Mirror Mad Phantasm is revealed. That player puts that card onto the battlefield and all other cards revealed this way into his or her graveyard. So this card is just really, really fun and hilarious. So it's kind of like a dice roll almost. You could shuffle it into your deck and it could be the card on top and you feel bad. Or like we've actually seen happen in a game in person before, you could mail literally 80 cards out of your deck. It's just, it's so funny. And it's really good because Atrata could be anywhere in your deck. So the smaller your deck is, the more likely you are to find it. So it's just really powerful to have here, even if it whiffs sometimes. We also have some just general good stuff to mill. Um, so deep analysis is for four mana, target player draws two cards, but it has flashback for two and pay three life. If we just mill this over, it's not too bad because we just have a uh, draw two cards for two mana just in our graveyard. Forbidden alchemy for three mana is an instant. Look at the top four cards of your library, put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So for three mana, you're putting three cards into your graveyard and one into your hand. And it also has flashback for seven, which is a considerable amount of mana, but it doesn't really matter because it is like essentially extra value from your graveyard. If you have the mana, you can cast this at instant speed. So just hold up the mana and it'll be fine. Champion of Wits, three mana. When it enters the battlefield, draw cards equal to its power. If you do, discard two cards and it has eternalized for seven, which means it comes back as a 4-4 zombie wizard token. When you play it the first time, you get to draw two cards and then discard two cards, which is basically like a better mill two if you have bad gardens in your hand. And then you could eternalize it if you let it die or if you milled it over, uh, you can cast it again and draw four cards and discard two cards which is giving you plus two cards and also filling up your graveyard a little bit more. Next up, we have some more reanimation spells. So first up is going to be Bond of Revival for four and a black, a sorcery. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste until your next turn. Obviously really good with our commander. We're going to be pretty vulnerable to removal spells as unfortunately we don't get a uh, lightning grease or swift foot boots under the one dollar restriction so haste is really good for us stitch together double black sorcery return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand it also has threshold return that card from your graveyard to the battlefield instead there's seven or more cards in your graveyard hitting threshold is uh, ridiculously easy here and a two mana reanimate spell is incredibly efficient and then finally dread return two and double black for a sorcery return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield so already four mana reanimates efficient but then it has flashback for sacrifice three creatures you can mill this over and cast it from your graveyard and not only can you cast it from your graveyard you can cast it without paying mana incredible card here we also have some creatures that help us reanimate as well champion of stray souls for six mana is a four four we could pay five and tap it to sacrifice x other creatures uh, and then we get to return X target creatures from our graveyard to the battlefield. So this lets us trade out our little cantrip type creatures that just help with our self mill plan and trade them in for our actual good creatures. And for seven mana, we can put champion stray souls on top of your library from your graveyard. So this is helpful if we ever run out of reanimate spells. This is just a, a reanimate spell that we can reanimate with its own ability. Sort of like infinite recursion, uh, just all in one card. Uh, we just have to have some creatures to trade for the creatures in our graveyard. We have a lot of things like Archaeomancer and other stuff that gives us other card advantage that we can trade for. It just really helps us uh, get back into the game where maybe we don't need to waste seven mana on trying to get back a champion of Stray Souls. It does look pretty bad, 
but it is pretty good and great for the cost. Apprentice Necromancer for two mana, a 1-1. One, one. Uh, we can pay one mana and tap it and sacrifice it to return target creature from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste. At the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice it. It doesn't even exile the target, which is perfect for us since we are a graveyard deck. And if it is a, a Trada, it'll just get shuffled back anyway. And it does give haste as well. So that means we can attack with the Trada just right off the bat after we reanimate it or any of our other reanimate targets. So next up we have a value engine here. The first part is gonna be blood for bones for three and a black a sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell, sacrifice a creature. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, then return another creature card from your graveyard to your hand. As long as we have just some random creature out on the battlefield, it's incredibly efficient by itself as we get two things back, one to the battlefield. Then Scholar of the Ages for five and double blue. A 3-3 human wizard, when Scholar of the Ages enters the battlefield, return up to two target instant and or sorcery cards from your graveyard to your hand. This pairs really well with Blood for Bones as if you have Scholar of the Ages in your graveyard, you can cast Blood for Bones, sacrifice a random creature, and return Scholar of the Ages to the battlefield, also picking up another random creature in the process. And then Scholar of the Ages can get Blood for Bones back along with another instant or sorcery, creating like an infinite recursion engine where you can just get as many things out of your graveyard as you want, which is very useful as it can help us in the late game if we're running out of reanimation spells for a Trata in case we need to kill multiple opponents. We also just wanted to include some general good reanimate targets. You're not always going to be lucky enough to mill over your Trata super early. We don't want your reanimate spells to be dead cards, so we have a few cards that are just really good to just mill over and reanimate. So Consuming Aberration for five mana uh, is a star star, which its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your opponent's graveyards. In Commander, when you have, you know, three opponents, you're gonna have a very high power and toughness on this thing because, well, they just people play cards. It also helps put cards in its in your opponent's graveyards by itself. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, each opponent reveals cards from the top of his or her library until he or she reveals a land card, then puts those cards into his or her graveyard. This lets you play a lot of our cantrip type effects to mill up our opponents quite a lot and just have a huge power and toughness. I've seen this thing close out many a games. We also have Kothafed, Soul Hoarder, for six mana, a six six with flying. And whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card and you lose a life. So this is just a big 6-6 six, six flyer that gives us a pretty decent card draw engine as well. Let's us beat down quite efficiently and keep on digging to try to find our actual plan or other value cards. We also have Sepulchral Primordial. For seven mana is a 5-4 with Intimidate, and when it enters the battlefield, for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Now, everybody has a plan to win, and sometimes the best plan to win is to take their plan to win and plan to win with it. So next up, we kind of have some tutors to help offset the randomness of just trying to find a Trata when it's shuffled into our deck. So first up will be Corpse Connoisseur for four and a black uh, zombie wizard, three, three. When he comes into play, you may search your library for a creature card and put that card into your graveyard. If you do, shuffle your library. So obviously this lets us uh, find a Trata anywhere in our deck and just dump it into our graveyard ready to be reanimated. It also has Unearth for three and a black Return this card from your graveyard to play. It gains haste. Remove it from the game at the end of turn or if it would leave play, unearth only as a sorcery. So if you mill it over or if it gets killed, you can do it again, which is very nice. So next up, Mausoleum Secrets for one and a black and instant, and it has undergrowth. Search your library for a black card with converted mana costs less than or equal to the number of creatures in your graveyard. Reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your library. So as long as we have four creatures in our graveyard, this will find a Trata anywhere in our deck and put it into our hand, which is nice. It can also get any other black card that we've talked about or are about to talk about, so it's kind of flexible there as well if you need something else. We also have an interesting backup plan, and we are a very spell-heavy deck, so Rise from the Tides for six mana is a sorcery that puts a 2-2 black zombie creature token onto the battlefield tapped 
for each instant sorcery card in your graveyard. We have quite a lot of instant and sorceries in our deck. While we're just going through the game and milling ourselves and casting instants and sorceries, we're gonna fill up our graveyard with a lot of instants and sorcery cards. So this can just put out an absolute ton of zombies if they don't have a board wipe or enough blockers for can kill a player. So usually this is gonna be good enough to get one player, maybe even two. So next step, we have some delve cards. And uh, as you've seen just now, you do need to be a little bit careful with exiling things from your graveyard as we do like the spell count for Rats from the Tides. And uh, we do want to keep some of our win cons in our graveyard and keeping a few creatures in our graveyard from Mausoleum Secrets can be helpful. But exiling lands or just if you're in a pinch, you might need to exile things from your graveyard. So it's still good, but just to keep in mind that we don't want to exile everything. So first up is going to be Treasure Cruise for seven and a blue, a sorcery with Delve, which means each card you exile from your graveyard while casting the spell pays for one colorless and it has draw three cards. So obviously if you exile seven cards, this is Ancestral Recall, one blue to draw three, very powerful. But even if you're paying like three or four, it's still really good. So you don't have to necessarily exile the full seven for Treasure Cruise to be worth it. Next up is Murderous Cut for four and a black and instant with delve and it says destroy target creature. So this is just a really efficient removal spell. For this one, it's just, if there's something that needs to die, just exile whatever you have to to be able to cast this. But again, like, you don't always have to cast it for one black for it to be worth it. And then finally, Tygam, Sidisi's Hand for three and blue black, a three, four human wizard. That says skip your draw step. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top three cards of your library put one of them into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. So obviously really powerful card selection slash milling ability there. And then for one black, you can tap it, exile X cards from your graveyard, target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn. So powerful, repeatable removal spell that can make use of things in our graveyard we don't need anymore. We also wanted to bring up these two cards because they help us protect our graveyard in some way. So Codex Shredder, for one mana, you tap it, target player mills one card. And for five mana, you can tap it and sacrifice it to return target card from your graveyard to your hand. If you have an important value piece in your graveyard or something like that, and somebody goes to exile your graveyard or just one card from your graveyard, you can bring it back that way. Or you can just, if you accidentally lost your blood for bones and your scholar of the ages is still in your graveyard, then you can go ahead and bring back either one and start the value engine up again. And perpetual timepiece is just classic and self mill decks to protect your graveyard. Two mana, you can tap it to put the top two cards of your library in your graveyard. And you can pay two mana and exile it to shuffle any number of target cards from your graveyard to your library. We are built around trying to find a Trotta, but any cards in your graveyard that you do want, if somebody goes to exile your graveyard, you can just shuffle in just the cards that you want later back into your graveyard and exile the ones that you don't need anymore. So this still helps us have a small deck, but it really protects the, the key pieces that really helps us keep going. So it can be very useful if you get this out uh, just to mill ourselves and to protect our, our graveyard. That's gonna be it for you try to self mill. Remember, every card in here is a dollar or less, so it should be pretty cheap if you wanna build it. If you think you can guess the card in the background, feel free to drop the name of it in the comments. Also leave a comment if you have a commander deck that you'd like to see us take on. We're also gonna have the deck list in the description. So if you wanna see the full deck list, it, it'll be there for you. We didn't go over a lot of the cards as a lot of them were kind of redundant. This deck was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.